After a string of mass shootings we've seen across the country, the topic of guns once again is topic A across the country and on Capitol Hill. A bipartisan bill aimed at reforming gun laws passed, but a lot of people still don't believe that goes far enough. That's why tomorrow a group of people with ties to the victims from the Highland Park, Illinois shooting will march on Washington to demand action. Aubrey McCarthy is with the March 4th Planning Committee. She's up late with me here tonight on The Final Five. Thanks for joining me tonight. I appreciate it. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Why is this important for you to be part of this tomorrow? Why isn't it important? Um, it has been a long day. We have been united with members from mass shootings outside of Highland Park, the most recent one that is near and dear to me in the Chicagoland suburbs. And we are here with Uvalde and support from communities of Parkland and Dayton, Ohio, others to ensure that we are unified in our mission to ban federal assault weapons federally once and for all. We know the time to act is now and we're committed to doing that. We've, we've seen this discussion play out on Capitol Hill many times in the past. There was a ban put into place back in uh, 1994, which was allowed to lapse. And when you look at the number of shootings that happened after that point, there was a demonstrable increase. What sort of reaction are you getting right now uh, as, you, as you prepare to talk with lawmakers? You know, I think a bit of our story is a compelling one to satisfy just that. Um, we have been able to mobilize over 500 folks to arrive with us to D.C. tomorrow, prepared and ready to march to make sure that our message is not missed, and that is to ban federal assault weapons federally. And we need to make Highland Park, the most recent shooting on the 4th of July, just outside of Chicago, mm -hmm. the last community that is devastated by these assault weapons. You, you mentioned Uvalde, and, and I can think of Sandy Hook, too, where you, I mean, Lord, I mean, I'm thinking of two schools here, but it just continues to touch school after school, where we talk about these shootings happening in the confines of a school. You talk about Highland Park. That happened on a quintessential American Day, a 4th of July parade. But there are people that say when you look at the laws that were on the books, uh, because th th this, this individual who was responsible for that shooting was able to obtain a weapon, that there was still some sort of breakdown in the system and and there are a lot of people that believe that that there's there's no controlling somebody's impulses like that you know we just refuse to let that be the answer we are not going to stop we have to make sure that we take it beyond just the bipartisan bill that was addressed earlier this week we need this to go federal we need these assault weapons banned we need them banned at the federal level we can't have these weapons of mass destruction on the streets and accessible to those who shouldn't have them. I, I know uh, you m mentioned that bill there, and again, there were some there were some incentives for states to put into place red flag laws. There were other uh, other moves towards background checks. I, I, th there are people that say, okay, that was a good step. There are others that believe, okay, the government did all that they should do within the confines of the Second Amendment. I mean, it is it is such a it is a touchy subject, but we keep seeing this happening, and there is a look. I don't care how people feel at home with this, Aubrey. You know, when you look at the weapons used, AR-15, after so many of these shootings, including, I think, back to the, 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 the synagogue shooting in Pittsburgh, which is, uh, you know, it touched my hometown not too long ago. Um, but this is a conversation, you know, that regardless of the human toll and regardless of the stories and, and the lives that have been torn apart, there are people that say, too bad. It's, it's a second, you're, you're impinging on people's right to own firearms, especially if they follow the law. It can't be too bad children are dying. Mothers, wives, sisters, aunts are dying. Mm -hmm. Uncles, cousins, nephews. It simply can't be the answer. And so we will not stop this fight. I, I hear you in that there's certainly a lot of opinions and I am no expert to unpack what everyone's thought behind their rationale is, but sure. to put our hands up and say that's it simply isn't going to work. It's not going to work for us and we're going to continue to unite with all of the communities that are committed to this effort to make sure that it's banned at the federal level. Let's talk about tomorrow. What do you plan on doing? What, what, what are the actions and what, what are the events that, uh, that you, and your, uh, you and your groups plan for tomorrow? Sure. So for those not familiar with March 4th, it is a grassroots movement. It began with our founder, Kitty Brantner, who just sent a social media post uh, via direct message uh, via her social network out to ask who's with me. And that became over 500 community volunteers, friends, family, you name it, in six days. So uh, to say that we are learning as we go and adding to the agenda with rigor is an understatement. But I do know that we are showing up from 11 to 2, lot 7, um, I will ensure that that is 
continuing to be accurate, but lot seven just outside the hill to make sure that we are heard loudly and that our tears are turned into power. Our anger and anguish is used for action. And we are able to make sure that our message is not lost and that Highland Park is the last community devastated by this. You know, I, I know you, you made this trek out to D.C. I'm just curious uh, on, on the local level uh, what the response has been from, from people who represent uh, Highland Park, from, from lawmakers from Illinois. What has their take been on, on your pleas? Sure. So we, we had the honor and, and are humbled by the supportive conversations that we had today with some of those folks that, that I believe you're thinking of. Mm -hmm. um, but truly, our focus this, this week is singular, and it is the federal message. How yeah. can we ban federal assault weapons? Well, you know, a few weeks ago on the show, we had a former uh, Republican congressman from Illinois by the name of Joe Walsh. He was a gun owner, but he uh, echoed many of the same points that you said his attitudes have changed. And, you, you know, a lot of people are in that boat where when it starts getting closer to home, when it really touches upon people that 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 are part of your lives, then it becomes intensely personal. I know it's a very tough topic to talk about. I appreciate you doing that with us tonight, Aubrey. And uh, again, uh, good luck tomorrow with everything. Uh, we will push out, push out some information on social media on uh, our Fox 5 and uh, the final five pages. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I look forward to a solid report about us not giving up in this fight. I have no doubt you will not. Thank you very much. And the final five is back yeah. right after this. I'm not going to